I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Let's take a deep breath as we welcome in your new year, 2018. Ah, I would say another year of separations, not much different than last year. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> What, uh, what's going to separate this year? You saw a tremendous uh, release of old masculine, feminine, Isis, Adam energies last year. As a matter of fact, we did the wound of Adam this last year. We, we, had a, we had a lot of our own releasing going on, and then you saw it happen all around the world. That, and it's just the beginning. So what is this separation going to affect in this year? What is it? Linda, microphone, please. Oh, boy. I've got to get this on tape to come back to this a year I've had now. people bribing me with money not to come to them with the <laughs> mic. <laughs> Take I mean, the money, give them the microphone. Okay, all right. So uh, what, what additional separations, what do, you, what do you see coming apart this year, other than yourself? That's not a fair <laughs> answer. Um, uh, this year I see the pot boiling over more and making more of a mess. Sure. And I'm seeing the cleanup crews come in to try to… Cleanup crews. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Give, old, me, old, give old. an example, though. I mean, pot boiling over, yes. Uh, for those in Colorado, it's very appropriate. But <laughs> what, what specifically what, what, what uh, group, what, what, what geographical part of the world, what uh, institution, what's going to come apart? Um, I think there's a very good chance we're going to see monetary changes. Uh, I think the Federal which Reserve way, is in I mean, trouble. No, that's a, well, that's a given. But which way, up or down? Uh, I think we're going to see some monies crash this year. Some and, or all, and people maybe all because everything's based on that. Yes, Federal Reserve. No, not well, really. No, 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 no. Well, let's stop right there. It's based on uh, trust and stupidity. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, the, the, yeah. The wor no, the world finances are based on those two factors, and they kind of work hand in hand. If you're stupid enough, you trust when maybe you shouldn't, <laughs> and sometimes that trust allows you to be a little stupid, which is okay. But it, it's a mutual trust. There is nothing backing it up. There used to be. A long time ago, there were pigs and cows and goats and sheep that yeah. backed it up, but there's nothing, so it's absolute trust. So it can soar high. And not even artificially. It can soar high, and it's still very valid, or can fall very low, very, very low, because it's all based on trust. And there's built-in mechanisms in the financing uh, world right now that keeps it from falling too far too fast, but, but it can. Uh, but I, I don't see that happening this year. Ah. I don't. No, no, not right away. Other things are going to come first, but uh, I appreciate your insights. Just a thought. Just a thought. <laughs> and you know, right here in the Crimson Circle, all thoughts are, well, not like Adamus's. So <laughs> thank you. But, but you're right, because um, you're actually projecting a little further into the future than just 2018. You're looking a little further ahead. That's what you're getting. Uh, this year, what else is going to come apart with separation? Uh, Adamus, is it possible for someone to have a right answer for you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't want to scare anybody, so I'm very okay. Yes, Here, it is, right and I'm more Here's than willing to acknowledge when okay, it happens. Okay. I'll even pay for good answers. Caldra, okay. where's your cash? <laughs> uh, we'll, Sorry. We'll, it'll be uh, on trust. Uh, trust me that you'll get the money. <laughs> good. Um, I guess I see myself separating from some old stuff. Some old stuff. Okay. Like what in particular? Oh, just um, old issues. Old issues. Um, yeah, I'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, no, truly, and uh, later in our in our little discussion today. Oh, yeah, good. What else? What else? This is going to go on film for next oh, year. Man, this is risky. Come Let's on, see, and you get I'm twenty bucks if I really like your answer. Feeling, 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 feeling. Or promissory okay. note. Okay, so uh, what, what else is going to come apart this year? You saw the masculine, feminine. The beginning, it was amazing. I, it was like I was watching a football game standing in, in, the, in, the, in the, what do you call it, skyboxes, uh, and watching all this happen, and it was so welcome, so long overdue. What else is going to come apart this year? I, the thing that kept coming to me this past month, from the last time I was here until this month, was just to expect the unexpected. Yeah. It's life is these days, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So. Okay. Just, uh, we're going to talk about that too. So we'll okay. put yours together and see how you're creating a shout here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the unexpected, so I, I've said before that a shout is when we bring together all the energies. Uh, it's, it's part me, it's part Caldra, Linda, the staff and the team, all of you, everybody watching in online, that's a shout. So you've thought maybe it's like a third, a third, a third. Third Adamas, third Jeff, Linda and the staff, a third Shamba. No, it's 100% Adamas today. Oh, ah. Would you allow me to finish? It's a, <laughs> it's 100% Adamas today. It's 100% Jeffrey, Linda, the, the team. It's 100% Chambra. How is that possible? That's 300% or more. That's where we're going. Everything Ooh. changes. You remember a while back, a year or so ago, in one of our shouts, I said, everything is going, oh, I'm going to borrow this today. Not the pad, the, the easel, or the... Uh, Stand. Remember when I said that everything is going new? Everything is going new. It's an interesting paradox because everything goes new, but everything seems to stay the same. Ah, uh, that's when you want to pay particular attention. When everything seems like it's the same every day the weather, the news, other people, your habits, everything like that it seems to stay the same, but Stop. Take a deep breath because there's something happening. Everything is going new. And it's not a contradiction. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. A couple more answers. What's falling apart? What, what's going to be separated this year in particular? Yes. I see uh, government, you know, just. Yeah. It's like it was a puzzle, and these puzzle pieces are popping and flopping all over yeah, yeah. the place. Some are burning Give up. Give me an example. Are... I mean, like government, like uh, they just stop working, like they ever did. No, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like uh, factors and people. Like they'll are, raise taxes. Uh, this is my my uh, saying: is like everybody's getting their pants pulled down. Everything's getting exposed. Yeah. And. Um, Maybe we should do that next at the next shot. Well, let's I'll just not. We'll mooning? just all moon. Just let's moon. say we did and don't. I like the idea. I don't know. Okay, but yeah. wear clean underwear, please. Uh, okay. <laughs> so it feels uh, like government. everything's getting exposed, and sure. I guess what would you'll people get do the without, monkey. What would people do without government, really? Whatever they wanted to do. <laughs> well, no, I, I, guess. I, I, mean. I say that government is the villain oftentimes. Uh, but government to me, always, I look at a government as representing the consciousness of the people, the incompetence. Lack of ability to get anything done, passing a lot of rules and regulations. Humans love the rules and regulations, starting with yourself. It just expands into the government. So, yeah, government's not a villain. Government is you. <laughs> oh, next, uh, or not not next, but anything else you want to add to the government? Uh, no, it just is changing, and I think we're uh, our country is sort of leading the way. The plow. Yes. Thing exposing, um, and hopefully this horrible stuff that's going on now will result, end up in <coughs> something better, more. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. Or Ooh, maybe really? not. Worse? Oh no, no. Actually, there's. Uh, I, I'm laughing. There's so much beauty in this, uh, I am, and I'm watching what you've created, but you haven't gone swimming in yet. Uh, I'll get to it in a minute. <laughs> that, have, that has to do with pulling your pants down, and is that related? It's all ties in. Okay. It's all ties okay. in. One more next year. You what, go, uh, this year, what's going to happen? Some of you have a really warped senses of imagination. Yes, I see separation between the people that are hunkering down in their families and groups for protection. Yes, and the ones that are willing to get out of that. You're actually on a very right track in a way. Uh, it, it's a little bit um, – I'll explain it a little bit different. Uh, there are those who are going to basically uh, stay in a dimension that doesn't change because they don't want to, and they continue to have governments because they need it, uh, that continue to really make no progress at all, and their worlds are gray and filled with a lot of um, yeah. hate and other things like that. And that will continue, and there will become not just this whole concept of New Earth that we've talked about before uh, in Pronos last year, but there will become numerous layers and levels 
of existence. Uh, they're there, it's just difficult to acknowledge them or recognize them right now. There will become more, there will be more clarity about them. So you can, I would say you, the, the, the life on this planet is going to get very layered, very layered. Right now it's very singular. You know, everybody's in the same big cesspool together. And there's, diff there's variances, some are in deeper, some are on the surface, some have it a little better. Now you're going to see that things really start shifting into a multidimensional reality in a way that uh, was difficult to imagine before. Yeah. My take on it for this year, uh, on a practical level. Uh, last year we saw the masculine feminine, the, the, the roles of Isis and Adam, uh, really start to change. Really, uh, and it came out with a lot of these um, accusations uh, and a lot of uh, – what is this movement called now? On, in Me Too. Me Too. A lot, lot of the Me Too movement. And coming out from the shame, that was, to me, so pinnacle, so important for women, the feminine energy, even if you're a man, f to come out from the shame of, uh, of living as a human, the shame of things that others inflicted on you. Take that, Shambra. Uh, take that into your life, the shame of things, not, not even necessarily sexual or masculine feminine, but the shame of things that you've had in your life, and now being bold and courageous enough to come out and say, no more, no more. We're not going to tolerate that any longer. Going beyond the shame and the guilt, the, those things, shame and guilt, are perhaps the biggest inhibitors of energy of anything. They really hold you back. They suppress you. They are, they are demons that hold you down, that make you feel guilty and not good about yourself. So this last year, uh, 2017, was finally letting that come out, saying no more, and no more of that masculine uh, oppression and, and abuse, and we're just not going to take it. And we're going to be willing to come out and say, yes, I was abused. I was uh, coerced, I was even raped, and I'm not going to take it anymore. That was a, a tremendous breakthrough. Now, I don't want to say it was just because this last year we were really in, in the depths of the Adam energy and the Isis energy and really exploring that. And the, really the, the, what I consider a, a very accurate story of the masculine and, and the feminine. And if you have not uh, had the opportunity to listen to the wound of Adam, it explains it so clearly what's really, really going on. And not with blame, and not with uh, victim consciousness, but saying, here's what's happening. So for 2018, my feeling – and it's not a prediction – I just feel into energy movements, high probability energy movements. The, the next thing that's going to blow apart are churches. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And there's going to be the same type of revelation that comes forward, financial mismanagement, uh, more of the sexual abuse that's, uh, that has come out in the news, and also simultaneous, a number of different things all coming out at about the same time about religions is the fact that a lot of the um, doctrine, a lot of the stories are going to be shown to be false. It's going to be very. There is a. Um, there are books, uh, current books that are out about that, saying something will emerge that is going to put such a question mark out about the churches and the power and the control that they've had, that it's going to explode, and it's going to cause a lot of fear on the planet because people rely on the churches. It's it's like um, it's kind of like a big comfort uh, and a great fear all at the same time. It's kind of an odd combination, but they rely on that. And you realize the whole concept of God uh, is, is really uh, quite new, really uh, about 5,000 years old, the single God. The Atlanteans, you, had very little, if any, consciousness of a God. I know it's kind of hard to imagine, and a lot of times when the New Agers get together and they go back to Atlantis and Lemuria and uh, indigenous tribes and, and think that there was tremendous wisdom back there. Not really. It was different, and there was a different, you could say, honoring or basis for, for beliefs, but 
there was really, really very little consciousness of God back then. It wasn't until about 5,000 years ago that that kind of swept across the world, and that's going to change now. To extrapolate, to go one step further, not only is the, uh, the, the whole dynamic of the power-based masculine church going to change this year with things that come out, but the whole understanding of spirit or God is going to change, and that's going to be difficult on some people. They are so, they are so ingrained in the ways of the church, and they have been for lifetimes. And remember, you came from that also. And the sins, and Jesus, and the whole story of Jesus is so inaccurate. So the whole concept of God is changing, and it's, it's like a, a ripple effect that's going to go through everything. So that's my prediction for this year. You're going to see a lot of activity on a church level. It's time for that consciousness to shift, but it's going to be much harder to shift that than it was, uh, than it is, uh, even currently, the whole energies of Isis and Adam. The whole consciousness of religion is so deep within people, and it, it goes across ancestral lines, past life lines. It's ingrained. Once again, take a look at the dynamics of a church. Not all churches, but many of them. Power-based masculine, financial motivations, uh, and suppression, suppression through sin. And it's not going to work anymore. It's not just not going to work. Well, I'm going to rephrase that. For those who insist on it, they're going to be at a different level, a different layer of reality. We're going to see a split, a change in the different layers of reality. Remember what we talked about in Pronost. Uh, two Earths, they're not coming back together. It would almost be sad if they did because it contained everything into linear single. So what we're seeing is now an opening up of many different realities. Some of you, some of you were saddened when I said New Earth and Old Earth are not going to come together. But look at what this really means, the potential for different layers of reality. When one incarnates into their next lifetime, it's not just going back to Earth. It's which earth do you want to come back to? Which earth do you want to come back to? The one that is basically guided by old religions, or an earth that basically uh, has the energies of crime and, and uh, suffering? Or do you want to go to an earth that has now the energies of expansion and wisdom? There will be many. And they're not – don't think in terms of outer space. They all exist right here. They're all within the, what you would call the now moment. They all exist right here, and they're all true, and they're all real. Most people will never see that other Earth. In other words, if, if you choose to come back to the Earth where religion and governments and money dominate everything, where there is power, where there is still masculine control, you're not going to be aware of the other Earths, that abundance isn't even a question anymore. And biology isn't uh, one of the main fears that you have. Uh, you're going to be going to a place where you can see or, or you are aware of the other stratas, the other layers and levels, but where you're choosing to go to to be a creator. Or just uh, you could go to the uh, spa new Earth. That's just you just go there to spa for a lifetime to get work done. Yeah, not so bad. Not so bad. Yeah. So let's take a deep breath with that. And oftentimes I, I start our sessions with questions to you. It gets the energy in the room and online going. Every one of you contemplates the question and contemplates your potential answers. And then worries like hell that Linda's going to hand you the microphone. Or some of you actually really want it and say, oh, no, I don't want the microphone. But I love it because it stimulates the energy. And this isn't about the, the wisdom of the masters. Uh, it's about the wisdom of Chambra. So I want to retitle this whole opening that we do as Chambra Wisdom or Potential Wisdom. <laughs> 
And, and you guys, you have to help me save face here, because I talk about you a lot at the Ascended Masters Club. A lot of discussions. How is Shambra? How is Shambra? How is Shambra? And I always come back and say they're doing great, making a lot of progress, really understanding things. Oh, some of them are so far ahead of me, you know, they're just amazing. <laughs> you know, like a proud grandparent. <coughs> not, not a proud parent, because uh, parents are so confused, but a proud grandparent. Say, oh, you know, the kid is going to grow up to be president or something. Not, not, not Donald Trump. But, uh, so make me proud. Give me good answers. Give me your wisdom, not just your linear thoughts. Give me your wisdom. So when, you're, when the question comes up and you feel the prowler around with the microphone, <laughs> you feel that, and all the lights come up and all the cameras focus on you, take a deep breath and feel into your wisdom rather than just your thoughts. How do you do that? Just take a breath. I am here. I'm in my wisdom now. You'll find that now wisdom becomes available, because the Master brings the wisdom of all of the lifetimes. It actually wasn't really accessible until quite recently. Now the Master comes in and brings that wisdom. So house lights up. Linda, on the microphone, please. And for the first question. I'm not going to prowl. Okay. <laughs> Peruse. Feel into the energies. Bring the microphone to somebody. Before the question? Yes, absolutely. Isn't that the fun way to do it? Yeah. You, you, get the, uh, you get the microphone first and then the question. I'm oh, scanning, the, the tension scanning. that rises. So it's it is. Uh, we need a little lead in music for this for the next uh, shout. Shambro Wisdom Time. Yeah. I love, I love through some of you, Caldra doesn't do it, but I love through some of you watching game shows. No, Caldra doesn't, but fascinating to watch. So I, I'm kind of, I guess, uh, crafting my own game show here. It's time for Chambre Wisdom. Do you believe in God? What concept of God? Good answer. Ding, ding, ding! The bell rings. We need a bell, too, for sound effects. That is a really good answer. I don't know, sir. I believe that they're all gods. <laughs> oh, somebody's in here. Oh, jeez. Sorry. Well, you weren't in there long enough. Sorry, enough. sorry. Somebody was in For there. For those of you that couldn't they see online, disgusting. Jeffrey just went into the women's room oh, to take penance. Really? Sorry, I am truly sorry, ma'am. Excuse me, that was a dominant. <laughs> so, um, so, where, where were we before I was gassed out? Uh, it depends on, on your perspective. Yeah, I think that we are all gods. Okay. Everything is a god. You, so you believe in God. In lot. You believe in God. In that sense, yes. Okay. But do I believe in somebody that is controlling and actually cares? No. A little bit, maybe? Nope. None. Not uh, just a tiny little bit? Well, I guess we could. Just as an insurance policy, just in case no, you get up there. No, I don't care about insurance policy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Zeus-looking guy says to you, "Hey, it's me." Well, what do you mean? You claiming you're God? You claiming you're God? Sure, I'm am. God. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, microphone around, please. Do you okay. believe in God? Isn't this is a great way to start our Chambra Wisdom show? Next. Different question. Same question. Let's find out. <laughs> What's behind door number two? I'm going to go to a new person. Do you believe in? <laughs> <tell us. laughs> do you see that look? Do you believe in? Uh, do, would you mind standing up? Sure. Uh, do you believe in God? Uh, I believe, um, kind of like what this gentleman was saying, that there's aspects of God and all of us and everything. Yeah. And everything. Okay, but I mean, uh, do you? Do you believe in God? Do you pray? Mm. Only when you're in trouble. <laughs> so, Shambra. <laughs> I, um, When's the last time you prayed? I think I, pray. I do pray. Yeah. I do pray. Every day? Uh, yes. Every you day. kneel down before you go to bed? No. Rosary? No. no. What kind of prayer? Um, I pray to... Um, 
I prayed to ascended masters and um, different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I pray to them necessarily, but I call upon different people that or different entities that I. Wait, well, just I gotta about. ask. Uh, but when you like when you're praying to an ascended master, <laughs> which ones do you prefer? I mean. Which ones are, it's are a the loaded nice, question. Which ones are the nicest? Yeah, definitely you're I you're very fun. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm wanting to have fun in prayer, then Yeah. yeah. I've never been described as fun. Kazumi may be fun. I'm not I'm not so fun. Uh, well no. I laugh a lot when I listen to you. Oh, so really? you must be fun. You sure it's me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. She's smiling right now. That's good. Uh, so you pray. Uh, what, what religion, if any, did you grow up uh, in? Um, grew up in a Baptist religion. Baptist, yeah. yeah. Do you dance? Oh, that was not not allowed. I know. Do you so dance I'm now? A, I, I, I dance now, but I'm a horrible dancer. It just isn't <laughs> oh, in my no genes. No wonder you, know? you got the Baptist dance thing on. Yeah, do you, I do. Do you, do you drink? I do. What do you drink? Um, whatever sounds good. Whatever's available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, margaritas are pretty yummy. Margaritas. Okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. I drink you know, you, those rules are, that's why I say this church thing has to kind of really come to an end. Those rule things are so stupid. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there's a difference between good morals and values and healthy things you do for your body and things you want to, uh, to really make it so you enjoy life more. But a church telling somebody that they can't dance, like Jesus didn't dance. Jesus was always dancing. I mean, they had to say, Jesus, the apostles were, stop dancing, sit down and like write something or do a prayer or something, you know, teach us. And he was always dancing. Yeah. So you wonder where they got that from. So you believe in God? I think the short answer would be yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. good. That's good. Next. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Uh, no, I don't believe it. You don't that. believe it? Okay. No. Why? Why not? Uh, I had an experience in Norway two years ago yes. where I have, a, I had, uh, I think you call it cosmic consciousness, yes. I think. Mm -hmm. And I saw my body being as light and I saw everything around me as light and mm -hmm. I felt like I had all the answers. Right. And I was in my own room, not actually moving. So, th okay. That what does that have to do with believing in God? Well, that proved to mm. me that I am God. Well, you do believe in God, then. No, not... I mean, let's find another word. Because you're, well, you're playing with the word. Oh, me? I <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking a uh, human consciousness question, mass consciousness <coughs> question. Do you believe in God? Now, the iterations of the answers are up to you. So I'm saying, do you believe in God? No. No? Okay. What do you believe in? Uh, consciousness. What is, what is consciousness? Um... The awareness inside me, the presence. Okay. It's I'm aware of it right now. Yeah, and that's that's God. No, that's not God. That's not God. We, we'll stick Is it a higher authority? No, no. There's no authority. There's no authority. Oh, no. Boy, don't tell that Wh to the church. Why do you need authority? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what religion did you grow up in? Uh, Christian Orthodox. Christian. Okay. I didn't really grow up because I was staying kind of out of the church, just playing with the candles. Sure. So. You were uh, an altar boy. <laughs> No, no. I oh, you're just playing with it. I just like to play with okay. fire. Like to play with fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your answer, for the record, is uh, I don't. I don't no, believe in God. You no. don't. So you're an atheist. No. <laughs> you're a let's agnostic. I don't know much about agnostic. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Agnostics. That's that. Isn't that a don't bad thing? I don't know much about. And then he was going to continue. So I'm. I'm getting him off. There's somebody in there. And it's really smelly. I wouldn't send anybody there today. I hope, I hope she can't hear. Okay. Is that She's Sandra still in, in there? there? She's still in there. Oh. Fortunately, oh, you do have a microphone. So you're not an atheist? No. What the heck are you? Uh, well, I'm. Oh, you're one of these creator. new thought kind of guys, you know, I'd liberal. Uh, Nothing uh, on the smorgasbord is good enough for me. I got to make my own, right? Kind of. Oh, okay. Maybe That's okay. If you want to okay. label if me I want to like label that? you, sure, sure. Okay. So we have an undecided here. Not oh, sure. Oh, I'm, I'm very decided. You just can't put words on me. I, exactly. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to very irritate clear. all of you. Yeah, yeah. It's good You're doing to a good job. New Year. Sure, sure. Okay. I had a good teacher. <laughs> 
<laughs> 20 bucks. Uh, <laughs> flattery will get you everywhere in, in this room, especially I wasn't money. flattering. Put it on the IOU list. I, I know, but I took it as flattery. That should flatter you that I was flattered. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Next. Do you believe in God? Uh, yes, it's a loaded question. I mean, come on. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Um, I feel that the term God is just very old and misused. It's so out of date compared to where okay. consciousness... Okay, all right. Allah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess I don't believe in the old God. Yahweh. But I believe in an infinite consciousness. Okay. How would you but explain that to a blind man? Um, Blind has nothing to do with it. It was simply a distraction. <laughs> How would you explain it to, uh, to somebody on the street? An inner um, ethereal presence of um, an infinite divine That's what they're going to be thinking. Just what the hell is she saying? It is. It's, a, it's, a, it's an inner, f if you can't, s well, you can't see it anyway, yeah. but an inner feeling of an, a presence that is um, beyond this third dimension. That's gas. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. i got to continue the theme. We are going to get um, serious later on today. Right. i gotta, I got to loosen you up and beat the hell out of you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, again, give um, me the real short description, uh, you know, the bumper sticker description. Infinite and, consciousness? In, in, yes. Okay. Infinite, yes. Okay. Yeah, well, would you put that on your license plate? Sure. Yeah, okay. Good. Actually, you, it would be actually easy. Could you draw for a moment here? Go ahead. No, I don't, I don't like machines. What are you asking? I'm adverse, to, I'm adverse to your computers. What are you asking? I want to ask you to draw. Oh, God. Two symbols. And, uh, symbols oh, and God, there is a God. And, <laughs> and draw them real... Um, Artistically, so the infinity symbol, you know what that is? I think Looks so. like a lazy eight. Just a minute. Inside. Okay. And the consciousness symbol, the circumpunct. You could put that on your, well, you know, but on, for a bumper sticker. Oh, that looks throw. like two boobs and a belly. <laughs> okay. Um, put that on your bumper sticker. Uh, Two you know, boobs and a belly. And, and do it, do it uh, horizontal. You know, side by side. Infinity and consciousness. Oh, Infinite you want to get rid of that? Okay, just a minute. Yeah, or make uh, Linda make one of your famous little pins wait. that you have. And yeah, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, which one do you want first? Infinity. Okay. And then consciousness. Oh wait. Okay. Side by side. That would be. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then maybe some of you Chambre all around the world can uh, create some really you know, beautiful designs around this. That'd be great. Yeah, I infinite, don't think so. Infinite consciousness. I like it. Okay, back to the microphone. One more. Do you believe in God? One more. One more. Let me see. Do you believe in God? I'm what a great way to start the year. Somebody's got a hot God? answer here. I can feel it. Who is that? Yeah. Let me see. Okay, wait. I, I am going somewhere with this, believe it or not. <laughs> Do you believe in God? God's a label, and I believe in an infinite intelligence of energy and a presence within you that you can go in and feel, and it kind of grounds you. Okay. And an opening of your heart. Right. I, I believe that infinite energy is just a creation. Right. It's not good or it's not bad. Okay. Um, is it up here? I mean, does it rule over your life? Does it guide your destiny? No. No? That was Come on, that was a pretty good answer. It, it, it's made up. Every, everybody has... Is God oneness? Everybody's energy goes into it, and anybody okay. can draw any information. If you ask a question, it's all out there. You weren't the first one to Sounds create like the a internet. thought. Sounds like the internet. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, well, Google. that's scary because infinite intelligence is surpassing the yes. human mind. So Google's God. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
maybe. <laughs> it's looking that uh, way. So, so, but a real simple answer, uh, do you believe in God, yes or no? You tell me your definition, and I'll tell you if I no, believe in it. No, it's your definition that I'm interested in. I, I don't have a definition of God. Okay, why not? Because it's been so misused over so many years, and the old definition of God doesn't fit with something I believe. Okay. She's good. Yeah, I like that. Good. Clarity, simplicity. Good. I bring this up as the opening question in Chambro Wisdom on this first shout of the new year, because I see so much of this, uh, the whole God concept uh, falling apart. And there's a lot of people that are very, very afraid of it. And it's actually the, one of the best things that could happen on the planet right now, changing the whole perspective about God. You know, it wasn't bad when it was um, kind of invented or created about 5,000 years ago. And yeah, there were some inklings of it prior to that. So 5,000 years is not a hard defining line. Because first people started to associate, uh, say, well, there, there's something, we know there's something beyond just the, the human consciousness and reality. So they started to cut humans apart and animals and everything else looking for that source. When they didn't find it there, one night sitting around the campfire, one of the elders got a little drunk and passed out. And when he came to, he looked up and said, ah, I know God's up there. And you know, prior to that, believe it or not, they didn't even see the stars. The stars have always been there, but they really didn't see them. And I should tell you something about human beliefs and human consciousness. Guy had to get drunk and pass out, knock his head on the rock, to suddenly say, "There's stars up there," and everybody else looked up. A couple more of the people, there are. Look at those little twinklies up there. A few more, and pretty soon, within a couple of generations, everybody saw stars up there. And they said, "That's where God is. That's where this spirit is. It's up there." And then they created a lot of spirits for everything, which, by the way, is true. There is a spirit of birds, and a spirit of rabbits, and a spirit of trees, and a spirit of certain species of trees. And there's a spirit right here in this gathering, right here, not only physically, but online. It has a spirit. It has kind of a, a group energy that is very real, is very real. And everything has a certain spirit to it, whether it's this podium, what, it has an awareness of itself. And this is an old, old Tobias uh, teaching. Everything has awareness of itself. It doesn't mean it's smart. It doesn't mean it is a creator or has a soul. It simply has an awareness of itself. So you have a spirit in, in anything, in anything. A, a family has a spirit. A, a table has a spirit. They're very different forms of that spirit, but it is a, you could say, a manifestation. It is a bringing together of energy or particles that have an awareness of themselves as a coffee mug. It's very important, very important. What separates you from this is you have creator ability. You are a creator. For so very long, humans have held this concept of churches of God, uh, the uh, Catholic Church has a lot of saints. Uh, you can pay to be a saint, by the way. They have a lot of saints, and other churches have uh, just a, a singular, very strong God. Um, it, it varies, but this whole concept of God is going to change, and, and we're going to see the beginnings of it, particularly this year uh, and going into the following years. We're going to see that first real crack in the church egg occurring. And it's time. It is truly time. And to that point, each and every one of you are truly a pioneer. You went outside of that comfort zone of saying there's God and there's Jesus and there's uh, all these others that you have to worship and atone to. You went outside of that comfort zone and said there is something, whatever you want to call it. And I know you don't like the word God, and I don't either. There is something. And then we struggle to define it. We try to put words to it. And the trick here was that there are no words that can be put on it. There are, there's no 
anything that a human does to define God is going to fall almost infinitely short of what that is. Uh, whether you call it God, Spirit, I call it Theo, uh, the Eternal One. And I don't try to define it from there. I don't say where it resides, how big it is, or anything like that. But it's simply the, the eternal uh, oneness of self, actually. To try to define God is uh, an injustice. You can't. I think it was Tobias again that said it a while back. Don't even try. Spirit, God, Theo, is an experience, and that's it. It can never be defined. Uh, the, the Jewish religion understood that. They came out with the name Yahweh, meaning that which should not ever be defined, ever, Yahweh. And then everybody used that word instead of God, and then it defeated the purpose of it. But it is only an experience, and you can have degrees of that experience with it. Some call it cosmic consciousness, the breakthrough. Everybody's experience is different, and all experiences evolve. They all evolve. Until one day you realize, <coughs> for lack of better words, that you are God also. Replace the word with God with spirit, Theo, or whatever. And until you also realize that at that point, that this incredible consciousness, awareness, is something that you were never, you were never given. You were actually never created, and you can never be uncreated. It blows the human mind to think about it, that you were never created. We talk, uh, we're talking in depth about that in Kihak, but you were never created. When then the obvious human question is, well, then where did I come from? It's like I just said, you weren't created. How could you come from anything? Well, yeah, but when did I start? You didn't. You've always been. And it's like, well, how could I always be what made me up? You, there wasn't. It's time that we go beyond all linear thinking. And you've done, actually, a very impressive job over that, with that over the years. Now we're going to the next step. I'll get into that more in a moment. But it's time to go beyond that very linear thinking. The, the concept of God is so old, but yet the human mind and its linear uh, thinking almost can't let go of it. It's, it, it. You heard from the wisdom of Chambre here. And it still is trying to relate to something. And there's, there's an attempt that Chambre has to say, I'm not going to believe in the old Zeus-like God anymore. Uh, I'm going to let that go. But you still try to associate with something that's out there or up there. Still trying to relate and actually hoping that there is something higher, hoping that there is. Because what else would be holding all this together? What would you be aspiring to? What would you be ratcheting up to if it wasn't for that God or Spirit or Theos? So there's almost a, a mental, uh, oftentimes subconscious, attempt to make sure that that's still in place. New thought. It was very big back in the <clears throat> mid to late 1800s, New Thought, all over the world. And it was very, it was very timely and appropriate. That's where Blavatsky really came in, and Kathumi and the likes of them <laughs> really came in. New Thought, uh, trying to, to break free, but yet their New Thought became kind of old thought, because, and, and Blavatsky would agree with that. Next <laughs> time she channels, you're going to find out what she has to say about that. But the New Thought. It basically just became kind of old thought, because so many of the humans would not let go of the concept of a higher power. Start looking, and maybe you already are, start being aware of the use of the term power. As a matter of fact, go to um, your internet, do some book searches on spirituality and religion, and see how many of these books uh, or classes have the word power in them. Because the human cannot let go of the concept of power or of a higher power. We're going to break, we are breaking new ground right now. And it's very unsettling to the human to really challenge the whole concept of God. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit, makes you a little nervous when I say, Is there a God? Well, 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 well. And you want to. 
you want to justify it or clarify it or whatever. But it raises the whole issue, are we ready to go beyond that? Are you ready to understand that there is no power, really no power? Are you ready to understand that there is no higher uh, source and to understand that you're never created? You're rid of all the stories about how you came to be. You have always been, always. It's almost frightening. And then you say, then what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> how did I end up in backwater planet, uh, in this backwater solar system? What went wrong? Let's take a good deep breath with that. And <laughs> move into the, our second topic, but they all relate to each other. Creationism or evolutionism, which is true. Linda, microphone, please. That would be interesting. The cre was, was this creation? You know, there is those that believe that suddenly God came down, uh, or the angel of God came down, and 3,000 3, years ago created this planet. 3,000 years ago. I mean, they really believe that. Oh, 6,000 for some. Uh, but they believe that. Others who believe that this is all just some cosmic fart that happened what? at the Big Bang. <laughs> cosmic fart. Well, it's about what it is. It's a cosmic fart because, well, l let me get your input first. Creationism or evolutionism? So all you got to do is top cosmic fart to go somewhere. That's okay. it. Well, that, that's really what it is. It. If you. I, I'm kind of a science guy. I was in my last lifetime. I love science because it opposed all the crap the church was putting out. And you can't deny science, but you can go beyond science. You can't deny science, but you can absolutely go beyond it. Please, creationism or evolutionism? Both. Both? How, how could that be? You're going to make a lot of people mad. Yeah, hold the mic up close. Oh, how no. could it be both? I don't understand. I ask a simple question and you say both. Because we evolve. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want this thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because no, we evolve. We've evolved for a long time, but we also create at the same time. And I think those energies that we're working with. I'm so confused. Don't see, I know, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. That's the funny part. Uh, no confusion whatsoever. So you, but, but are, do you evolve? Are, are you still evolving? Are humans still evolving? Word. I would say the master self is evolving. Master self is evolving. In okay. The human. The human's probably not. The human is not, but the master is. Okay. That's sad. Uh, <laughs> maybe true though. So, but you said both. Okay, evolution. Where humans is evolving, the masters evolving. But where did you said creationism also? Where did that come in? Where, where, where did it, it's either evolution or creationism? How could you have both? I don't think there's an either or. I'm tired of the either or. I think we. I think it's all. But, well, okay. Then, then explain where did creation come in? At the beginning. The day we were born. In this lifetime. Well, we've been here many lifetimes, so it's, e it's evolved in creation from way back when. So what I hear is that it took creation in the beginning, and then it evolved. Very good plan, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. What would happen if creation just pulled out and said, eh, look at that, didn't work out so well, just withdrew? Would evolution continue? I know you want to say those words, but <laughs> look what happened to me when I said them. The audience threw me out. <laughs> so that makes us super if, if, if evolution it's, it keeps evolving, and let's say creation, the Creator pulled out and said, eh, no more, what would happen? Would it all come tumbling down? And you realize I'm just really toying with all of you today. Because you can. Because I want to. <laughs> So maybe that makes us super amazing, magnificent beings. Or not. <laughs> so yeah. it will continue. Yeah. It will con okay. So, it will, so evolution would continue if creation backed away from it. Something will keep changing and evolving. Okay. Yes. By the way, I have to say, um, 
it, I, I look at your energy. You know the answer so well, but the human is blocking right now. Yes, it is. Yeah, and you're probably going to get a sore the throat in the way. and all the rest of that. And you're probably, oh, <laughs> Damas is really, you're doing beautifully and you're helping a lot of people. So th these, are, it. these are tough issues. I mean, yes. th this is, it goes beyond philosophy. It goes beyond a lot of stuff. And that's why I'm pushing today. So it's good. You already I'm know the answer, me though. too, so thank you. Good, good, good. Good. A couple more. Okay, oh, who's, a, who's a philosophical intellect here? Anybody? Oh, I Any? know one for sure. You dare raise your hand. You know I'm going to blast <laughs> you. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something you'd like to it's, share? It's a private joke. <laughs> I st people Not ask me, what can I do so that I don't get the mic? And I said, all you have to do is pick at a body fluid <laughs> or in a nasty place, and I won't hand you the mic. It obviously didn't work. <laughs> Okay, Long I, I got to go back to the Ascended Masters Club tonight and give them a report. <laughs> and what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Body fluids. Okay. I forgot the question. Cre <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about here? Is it evolution or creationism? Uh, well, I was going to say what the other lady said, both. Both. How? I'm confused. I How know. could it be both? Well. How could it be both? We are creators. You just told us that. Yeah. Do you believe it? Camera, get a shot of that. <laughs> Do you yes, believe it? Yes, yes. You want to believe it? Yes. But you don't necessarily believe it? Well, it's, it doesn't always seem apparent to me. Exactly. On an everyday basis. Okay, we're going to blow up the whole idea of creating, okay? Mm -hmm. And you really understand. But, but how could it be both? Unless, uh, I get it, well, I get it. So you're going to make a, 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 some bread. Mm -hmm. And that's where the creator comes out into the kitchen and grabs the flour and grabs the salt and the butter and all the other things, that's the creation. And then mixes them all together and puts them in the oven, that's the evolution. I get it now, how you can be both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Yeah. Is, Except is that, that, is that, uh, is that what you mean by saying it's both? Well, that's not true creation. Creation isn't taking things that is because of what you've told me already. It's not taking things that already exist and putting them together to create something new. Okay. Ooh, she's been so listening. therefore, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, so therefore, you walk into the kitchen and realize there is no kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and you just imagine for a moment, and there's a kitchen, and everything is filled with ingredients, and then you put the bread together and put it in the oven, but the oven is still evolution. Is that correct? Is that what you're trying to say? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's what I'm saying. Okay. That, that's good. And, and uh, the, the confusion here, the aggravation, the frustration, and wondering when we're going to get to the marab <laughs> is, is all <laughs> – the marab is spiritual dessert. You realize that? <laughs> good, he stopped talking, and now we can just – Get to some sleep, much needed sleep. What if I said there's no, no Marab today? Oh. oh. <laughs> good. And you go out to your cars and have your own Marab. Good. Oh, good. Okay. And I'm intentionally pushing today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. good. Thank, Thank you. you. She's a good sport. <laughs> Before I get to, the, uh, to my version of the answer, just a few words. First of all, I love a good atheist. I really do. I, I have tremendous respect for an atheist. They're, they're true to their beliefs. A atheists are as, em as emphatic or more than their counterparts, the, the religious zealots. Uh, they really believe in it, and they really abide by it, and that's all they're going to see. There's no God. I love a good atheist because we don't have to go through the long explanation, discussions, and description of, of defining God. You ask an atheist, what's God? God doesn't exist. That's it. We don't have to have these long discussions and these philosophical banterings and everything else to finally realize you can't define God anyway, or spirit or theo, whatever you want to call her. It is just an experience, and that's all it's ever going to be. So don't even try. If you meet Buddha on the road, and Buddha says, what is God? The answer is, 
it is simply an experience, and Buddha's going to give you a great big hug, because that's it. It's just an experience that can never be defined. As a matter of fact, the more you experience, the less you want to or can define, because it goes far beyond any human definition whatsoever, any human definition. In that respect, there is no God, because you, the human cannot comprehend it, never will, but can experience it. That's the good news. I love a good atheist because there's not a lot of debating or arguing. They're like, there's no God. On the other hand, I feel very sorry for atheists. Very sorry, because <laughs> could you imagine <coughs> your entire premise of your life, everything, is that you came from green pond scum and you evolved. You came from the big cosmic fart, the Big Bang, which I still don't understand. That is one of the strangest theories I've ever, ever heard. It's so human, uh, it, it, the Big Bang. It's so human because they don't answer the simple question, what came or what caused the Big Bang? Well, I don't know, but there was a Big Bang. Until you can at least connect with what's on the other side of that big explosion, don't talk to me about uh, nitrogen and hydrogen and forces and particles and all the rest. I don't want to hear it, because you've got to explain what's on the other side of that. Is there a God on the other side of that? There couldn't have been nothing. What is on the other side? But I love a good atheist, but I feel sorry for them, because what do they have to look forward to in the morning? Getting up and just being a little higher evolved green pond scum. That's it. When you think back on things like, um, where did I come from? And they go look in the sewer. <laughs> came from there. And they go look at a stagnant uh, lake somewhere you know, with all the algae. That's where I came from. Those are my ancestors. When, when they go back and do a, uh, what do you have, uh, Calder's Timing? Uh, Ancestry.com. You, know, you look up your ancestors and you look up and your ancestors from three generations ago came from. Europe to, to get away from the uh, suppression of religious concepts. And the ones before that came from, uh, maybe they were with King Arthur, and then they came from uh, Israel. Maybe they knew Jesus or something. And then before that, they were in Egypt. And before that, you know, we keep going back. And you look at that lineage, the ancestors, and then, ew, the family tree was sprouted in green pond scum. That's where I came from. That's kind of sad. I mean, to, to have that as your, as your ancestry, as your lineage, going from a single cell, single little cell, with little single cell intelligence, just a lonely single little cell out there. <laughs> well, there's a little single cell awareness. Oh, I'm so lonely. I'm a single cell. Oh, oh. This is oh. a really good distraction. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm a little single cell, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you meet. Oh, another cell here. Come and have sex with me. Oh, 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 oh. Let's let's be multiple cells. Oh, yes. And then it's like, come on over here. Oh God, we're having a menage a trois cell. And it's like, oh, oh, and we're gonna dance together. We're now we're multi cell. Oh, and come on in, Andy. Come on. Come on, in, come on! In. Now we're gonna we're gonna be multi multi cells. Look at us grow and expand. Look at Elizabeth join in the cell club. Come on, multi cell, multi cell, and we're gonna keep evolving and expanding. We're gonna keep evolving and expanding until we get all the cells to come together. Yeah, sing kumbaya cells. Okay, thank you. It's gonna be a long year. A long year. And the question you gotta just ask for those who believe that. You evolved, we evolved from single cell to multi cell. That, that cells ratcheted up. In other words, they said, Oh, boy, life as a single cell was kind of rough, kind of lonely. And then I got these other cells, and we joined in and we created intelligence and we evolved into a, a physical body. <clears throat> and, but you got to wonder, I wonder anyway, why wouldn't the single cell? eventually go back to single cellularity. Why? 
that's actually more of a natural course of life is to go back to its origins at a certain point. So why didn't your single cells get together with some other cells, join forces, gather together? Why didn't they just say at some point, you know, had enough, you guys. I'm going back to single cell. I've experienced what it's like. You guys kind of smell. You're pushy. You're always trying to steal my energy. I'm out of here. Going back to single cell. It, that didn't happen. It didn't happen. There is a belief that all evolution was always ratcheting up, moving forward, trying to constantly evolve and improve itself, to become more self-aware and self-improved. To a degree, that's true. Get to that in a moment. But back to the atheist. If, if any of you are atheists, I don't assume you would be here. But if you were, if I was an atheist, I'd always hold open a 1% chance. I'd be a, a 99 atheist. I'd all keep open a 1% chance that there could be a God. You see, because, first for the insurance policy, if I you know, got to the other side and said, oh, geez, there really is a God. Say, see, but I had a little bit of belief. But the other thing is that with the 1% belief in God, at least you're keeping the door open to a potential. Otherwise, you're never going to see the stars. They won't exist. If you have a 1% openness that there might be, you're at least going to see 1% of the stars that are up there. And that might open the door to seeing all of the stars. That might open the door to seeing the dimensions. That might open the door to seeing all the other things that are around you right now. All the other things. In answer to my question, was it creationism or evolutionism? It was both. It is both. It is both. You're all right. And I'm just trying to, I'm trying to look to say, do you really believe that, or are these just words that you're saying? Can you tap into the feelings? But there's a, there's a big but in all this. The supposition that things move from beginning to end, that we go from uh, a lower life form to a higher life form, that creation as most people understand it, means getting bigger, better, self-improved, and more self-aware. It's very interesting to look at the whole dynamics of how this all came to be. If you're only looking at it from a linear standpoint, going back to your relatives, going back to – even there are some who believe that there was a point of creation on the planet, a point of creation, where for instance, there was a bunch of apes swinging around in the jungle, and an angel or God or whoever came in and said, okay, now we need to bring some intelligence into this, and like that, uh, in, in, embedded into the ape the, uh, the, the God gene, the, the, the God energy. And then that ape then evolved into the Homo sapien and eventually evolved into the human. There's some that believe that. And you know what? In a way, they're all kind of true, but I'm going to add a little bit different twist on it that has such implications in what we're all doing, such implications of our understanding of why we're here, what happens next, and, well, where things are going. Feel it for a moment from the perspective that a true creator does not have an agenda, is not trying to create a specific. True creation is simply a letting forth of passion <clears throat> with, with no power, no force whatsoever. Just letting forth uh, – think of it as like this huge joyful laugh without directing energy or power or force or anything else. A true creator would never say something like, I'm going to create this planet, I'm going to create this thing called humans, and they're going to 
love and they're going to fight and they're going to they're going to scrape and they're going to suffer and they're going to have good moments and true creator would never do something like that true creator simply has a you would call an outburst of creation of awareness expression just because no agenda no agenda whatsoever that radiance of the just the joy of the I am that goes forth it goes out but it also goes in <clears throat> and then energies are aligned without the creator controlling the energies the creator would never do that and the energies go out and <clears throat> ultimately manifest into something like this this is a manifestation it's um you know, it's in the material realm it's in matter but creator never said i'm going to make earth uh, and there's going to be matter and all the rest of it the creator just said let it be let it be so and then it was and instead of looking at life as coming from green pond scum or at some moment in time where uh, the creator infused apes with uh, with creator energy and they became humans start looking at things from the perspective the merlin perspective you go back in time instead of evolution where you have cells continuing to evolve and getting more intelligent and all the rest of that you're actually we're actually going back from the moment of true creation we're going back from when the earth split into many earths when certain ones came forward in pure consciousness and there were other earths where there was less consciousness and we're actually going back rather than forward it's already been done it's already all here not the details of what each day is like or how the weather is or how much money you have that is for you to experience along the way back we you and, and a scientist is actually looking at it from almost the wrong way starting at what they would call the beginning the single cell that evolves it's actually really not the way it's more the other way going back to say how did this come to be it already is how how did all the particles come together from this outburst of creative laughter how did the particles come together and what you're doing as a creator what you're doing is swimming in your creation you said you, you without any agenda without knowing there would ever be an earth you said let it go forth and and it was created and you were like that is amazing wow wonder how that came to be i'm going to dive into that creation and i'm going to swim to the bottom I'm going to find out how it ended, which is what the humans would say how it started, but it's how it ended. And you know what? That talk about the atomic and the subatomic level and now quantum levels. It's just science going back through time and then never reach the bottom. And never reach the bottom. They they think it's the beginning, it's the end. They're going the other way. How did this all come to manifestation? Beyond the atomic level are the quantum levels, are the amazing multidimensional levels. They'll just keep going back and back and back. And within 10 years of time, there's going to be whole new theories about how life evolved. It didn't just start at the single cell level. It wasn't just particles and uh, even atoms just coming together. I'm fine. Accidentally. It, it was, you're going back to see how it ended, not how it started. You see, and ultimately, really, there was no starting point. My point here in this: let go of even the ideas of what you thought God was, what you thought evolution was, or creationism was, because you're still trying to put it together in a human mind. And we're going to go beyond that. It's already done deal. Now you're just going back. You're swimming in your creation. That's it. And God ultimately is something that only can be experienced, another way of saying, you are God.
You are that spirit. Now let yourself experience it. This is all a way of saying that linear thinking isn't going to work anymore, and there's three main points, three imperatives I want to make today as we go forward. That was the first one. Wow. <laughs> How much time do we have left? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> three imperatives, uh, necessities, uh, I don't want to call them requirements because there are none, but three imperatives to really go forward where we're going forward. By the way, uh, before I get into the, the rest of them, I have to say that it's been a tough week for me. It's been a tough week because, you see, we have this thing called the Crimson Council uh, in the other realms, and it's made up of you know, angelic beings. Uh, originally, the, these angelic beings came together. There's about 4,000 of them. These angelic beings came together for the purpose of teaching. Uh, and that was the, the order of the Crimson Council. And the color crimson, uh, in, you could say in the other realms, the spectrum that you would perceive as the color crimson, has to do with teaching. And the Crimson uh, Council, that order, is involved with teaching in many, many different uh, dimensions, different uh, parts of, of creation. They'll take things that were learned in one part and bring it over to another part. So that color crimson uh, is, is very important. And, and that's kind of the – well, the crimson circle is the earthly affiliate. So you are originally came with the teachers for consciousness on the planet. It was a tough week because well, last week we took a look. We had our, our annual board meeting. B O R E D meeting, and <laughs> we had all the representatives, all the members of the Crimson Council there. And I talk, was talking to them about Chambra, and I said, You know, we're, we're actually progressing pretty fast. You know, we have, some, we have some issues, but we're getting through them. We're actually progressing pretty fast. And I said, At this next show that we, this thing we do together, we're going to we're going to come up with some uh, imperatives, uh, some uh, necessities. And I explained it to them, exactly what I'm going to talk to you about today. There was some dissension in the Crimson Council. You might have felt it, particularly last Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Uh, this meeting was long. And I said, here's where we're going. Uh, there was a lot of moaning and groaning. And there was a lot of what I would call the more New Age-oriented angels that were in there, the ones who kind of are working with and helping some of the ones just going through awakening or some of the ones that are stuck in, in a New Age and all the rest of that. And they didn't like what I said. So I fired them. <laughs> no, really, I did. I mean, really, really. I, I can do that. I, I, I'm the boss. The boss can do things like that. No, I, I fired them. That's a human word. That's oh, that's a Trump word. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Ooh. Okay, I relieved them of their duties and their responsibilities. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, we we actually it was a very it was a very fun meeting. But there was about uh, almost eleven hundred of these angelic beings, pretty high, pretty high level, that said, "Nah, we're not going to go forward with you. You you just." This isn't our this you know, we work with humans too. We have our groups, Adamas, that we work with, but our group is not ready for this. So we, we've got to resign from the Crimson Council. And, and it actually you learn that uh, that kind of releasing is beautiful for them, for us, for everybody. But we had about about eleven hundred that walked out. So the Crimson Council is a little bit smaller now, uh, and more efficient. Because now we can really focus. And uh, the, by the way, don't think like humans. There were no hard feelings. They knew it was time. And they knew that the human individuals and groups that they were working with simply are not ready. Uh, simply not. Simply not, which I'll now explain. So three imperatives. The first, it's time to go beyond linear thinking. And it's going to be challenging. When we talk about God or we talk about creation or evolutionism, stop thinking in linear terms. 
In other words, start exploring every possible iteration of everything. No longer just looking at a road as a road that goes from point A to point F. It's a certain number of kilometers long. It's not. It's not. Uh, it is, but it's not just that. When we talk about evolution or creationism, don't, don't think in terms of where it started or how it started, like you did linearly. It is already, it is already so. The outcome, you could say, of the planet Earth is already done. And now you're swimming back into your creation, diving into it to experience, how did this all come to be? How did things evolve? Or perhaps better said, devolve. How did these things happen along the way? See, science uh, really believes in, well, in the scientific method, and they believe that everything has to be proven, and therefore they're only going to see what their beliefs are, like an atheist is only going to see their beliefs. They're not going to see that the science is correct, but they're, it's only partially correct. There's so many other iterations. We're going to be playing with iterations in some of our shouts as examples to show you. But the whole thing with uh, evolution and creationism is already created. There was no agenda or no power from creation into this. There was no predetermined outcome or destiny, but it was already done. It, the moment a creator creates without agenda, without scripting, just says, boom, creative energy, whew, it's already done, finished, completed, and now it's only for the Creator to go back and swim within their creation, feel it, to experience it, to be in it. And they don't need to. You don't have to go into every one of your experiences, but some you do and some you don't. But you realize that this whole concept of evolution from going back oh, 3.5 billion years ago to when the first single cell came to be. How did it come to be? They don't answer that question. How did that? Three and a half billion years. That's a long time for evolution. To go from single cell to what you are today. I mean, I would be pretty depressed if I thought that was really <laughs> three and a half billion years. I mean, how many more millions of years do we have to wait for a real improvement around here? The point is, it's time to stop thinking linearly, and I'm going to be challenging you every step of the way, every workshop, every shout gathering, to look in all perspectives, not just linear. It's already been created. And, and, you know, I say to you, you're already um, enlightened. You like to hear that, you don't believe that. You say, well, yeah, okay, that was, ooh, glad, but I'm still working on it. No, you're not. Stop that now. That's a bunch of human linear crap. Stop that now. And then you say, okay, but okay, I, I, I'll go along with that. I'll, I'll stop it. But then I've got to, then I got to experience it before I really believe it. Well, let yourself experience it then. Dive into enlightenment. Stop putting it in front of you. Stop working at it. Relax into it. Be it. And there's going to be part of you who say, well, that's phony and I didn't earn it and I have to progress. No, stop that. Stop thinking in linear terms about anything, whether it's creation or, or even the way the, the sun rises in the morning. They say the sun rises in the east. Okay, that's one level and layer of all of it. What you're going to be experiencing, uh, all of us together, in these um, coming days, weeks, years, you're going to, we're going to be evidence. Uh, we're going to be experiencing the split of a single Earth. Now, I'm not talking about split as in this Earth breaking into pieces. It is opening up into many different layers and levels. It's going to be really confusing to ones that are going to be in reincarnating uh, because sometimes they're going to, where's the Earth? Where's that tube leading back down to the Earth? Which and now there's going to be a lot of tubes with a lot of different Earths. It's all changing right now. And then the question that some of you have is, okay, well, which, which tube do I take after I leave this lifetime? Uh, which one do I take? Don't think linear. First of all, take any and all that you want. Any and all. You're not limited. 
and understand you're not going forward, you're not ratcheting up, you are actually just going back in time. You're doing the Merlin thing. You're experiencing what it was like to have a creation. That's all. That's number one point, and I would like these written up and put somewhere where, where you can be reminded of them and see them. Uh, it's time we go beyond linear thinking, and I'll be calling you out on it. Uh, not that this thinking is wrong, it's just one element. Just take a deep breath for a moment and imagine getting off of singularity. I have to laugh at that term, but linear single, linear local. And you're going to feel at times like you're going out of your mind. You are. You have a comfort level and a certain uh, level of awareness and thinking and perception. And the comfort level for many people starts with a belief in God that holds everything together and goes all the way down to the sun coming up in the east. It's all going to change for us. That's why some left the Crimson Council, because their groups that they work with simply were not ready for that. It would undermine them. It would throw them so far off. It would cause mental, um, great mental instability. But we're ready for it. That's number one. Number two in the things going forward, number two in what caused a lot of the angelic beings in the Crimson Council to to leave, and they formed their own group, uh, kind of like a lesser Crimson Council, kind of pink council, uh, <laughs> you know, faded red council. Uh, <laughs> number two, and I cannot uh, impress upon you the importance of this for yourself. Ultimately, I don't care, but for you, and you're going to nod your heads in just a moment. And then all year long, I'm going to have to kick your butts. <laughs> yes, true. This is a tough one. <coughs> Going beyond processing, emotional processing. There is no room in what we are going to do together for emotional processing. Oh, I was beat as a child. Good. <laughs> you didn't let me finish. <laughs> I was just swimming in my experience. Get over it. No more. I had to do a whole master's life. I had to interrupt a perfectly good flow that I was having in our master's life series. The next one was supposed to have been creation in master's life. Master's life five, amio, the good life. Master's life six, creation. I had to stop it and say, hang on a second here. We can't go forward because they're still holding on to their emotional wounds. They're still, oh, poor little baby, inner child. It's like there's no room for it. Because when you are so addicted to your wounds, and I mean that, underline that, dear Gail, when you are so addicted to your wounds, you're going to keep running in circles, and that wound will keep building. That wound will develop. Listen to this. The wound will develop its own spirit its own life, its own identity, its own awareness. You're going to be dreaming about it. You're going to be living it out in other dimensions, and you're going to be carrying it around here. It is going to have awareness. Yeah, it just makes you – yeah. Or did I spit on you? Um, it is going – you've got to get over it. How do you do that? You just get over it. You don't process it. Somebody said, well, you go to see a counselor. No! You get therapy. No. No more therapy. No. No more therapy. It's bullshit. It is. It serves humans, semi-awake, sometimes unconscious humans, at least they feel that somebody's listening. And that's really important to them, that somebody hears about their trauma. But ultimately, you get to this point, it does not serve you. And to self therapize, I guess that's a word, self therapy, forget about it. It runs you in circles. It gives credence to the very thing that you're trying to release. It gives spirit, it brings it to life. Just like this podium has an awareness, so will that wound. And that wound isn't even real to begin with. 
You're only remembering part of an experience, not the whole thing. You're only seeing one layer and level. Get over your processing, all of you. Grow up. <laughs> oh, I love this. <laughs> ah. No, I, I, mean, I mean, grow up spiritually. Realize, mature spiritually. Realize that it's an obsession. It's an addiction. It's an emotional addiction that you're playing with. You're playing with old energy, and it's bogging you down. And you keep saying, "Oh, Damas, you know, I was beat as a child, and I don't have any abundance." Then get out of here. We don't have room for that. Just like we had to let oh, 1,100 angelic, pretty big names, we had to let them go. Because their groups still wanted to process. Uh, they tried to negotiate. They tried to say, well, let's do a little processing, maybe less processing. Maybe we'll, do, we'll, we'll give up crystal therapy and we'll go to uh, like water and uh, mustard therapy. <laughs> There's no room for it here. And, and I'm serious. If you're still into processing and you just can't let go of it, you got to have that. Bye-bye. Go to the pink circle. <laughs> What? Pink circle? Well, it's not as bright as the crimson circle. It's a faded, faded. It's it's on its it's evolving to be a, a crimson circle. No, there there are processing is appropriate for uh, up uh, to a point, to a point. But then it it is self. Um, it is uh, not self improving. It is self perpetuating, and it will grow and grow and grow, and it will turn into cancer. Period. It will turn into cancer. Uh, will either hit you in the gut, uh, in the in the lungs, in the mind, and for Shambra, probably more like in the gut than anywhere. Get over it. It happened, or you. It was part of an experience. We simply don't have room for processing where we go. And you say, "Well, how do I get over it? I have these ghosts and memories, and I just." You take a deep breath and you say, I am here. Here, not there. I am here. And you don't think about it. And you don't battle it either. You don't fight those demons anymore. You don't fight the, oh, poor me, and I don't have any abundance, and none of that. We don't have room for it. You're going to find out that it's going to hurt ten times more where we're going than it does now. When you start going into multi uh, layers, nonlinear layers of reality. And we start going back through evolution rather than forward to it. We do the Merlin effect. It's really going to hurt if you're dragging a bunch of crap with you. It, it will. Those little inner child monsters are going to turn into big demons uh, in that. Because you see, you're going to a place where you start to understand real creation and real energy. And they're going to suck that energy. They're going to grow that energy. We want to be clean going in there to where we're going. We don't want to be dragging little uh, blankies with us where we're going. <laughs> so we're going to grow that energy. We want to be clean going in there to where we're going. We don't want to be dragging little uh, blankies with us where we're going. <laughs> so that's number two in the imperatives. That caused a great big riff at the Crimson Council. That's number two. Beyond processing, get over it, really. Why are you hanging on to it anyway? And, and the processing includes all the things like your um, physical being, worrying of over obsession about the body. Everything that's happening to you right now, body, mind, experience, everything is all about realization, all about enlightenment. There's nothing that's so stop obsessing over your body. It's changing. It has to. Stop obsessing over your thoughts. Are you doing it right? Are you doing it wrong? Got to get over it. And, and it's only you can do that. And only you can say, no more. No more. We recently uh, filmed that, uh, created, we, all of us, created Master's Life 6 No More. Remember, it was supposed to have been creation, but we had to delay it because there were some of you that were still obsessed. And I just draw a line. No more. That's it. Don't think about it. Don't obsess about it. Don't 
Don't energy feed off it either. No more. Okay? Aren't you tired of it? So am I. Good. And next. Next. Let's take a good deep breath with this one. Oh boy, here we go. This is going to be a marab. Now you get your marab, your little dessert. So, no, it's actually a great big dessert. Let's do marab lighting and marab music. I, I wanted to save number three for a marab. So appropriate. You having fun yet? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Remember the two things we talked about so far is let's go beyond linear thinking. It's so boring. It's so boring I'm trying to figure out life and God and evolution and how things work. You're never going to find the answer. Just like those who, uh, who keep going, uh, into the, going back into the molecular structure and that they're always going to keep finding more and they're never going to find what they're really looking for how this all came to be they're not going to find it but we take a whole different approach we get off of linear thinking remember when i said you're not moving through time and space you're not moving through time and space it's moving through you go tell that to a physicist and they're going to they're going to argue and they're going to tell you some flake but they're going to find out, probably in your lifetime, that, that there's going to be one amazing physicist who comes out with a theory, kind of like when Einstein came out with some of his, uh, and, and then they're going to spend generations trying to prove it or disprove it. But it was going beyond linear thinking. Time and space are moving through you. It's the same with creation. It's already occurred. There was no agenda. There was no script. It was like. It was like the Creator took a great big breath of joy and released, and the bread was coming out of the oven. Hot, warm, tasty bread. And the Creator goes, how did that happen? I, I see bread. I smell bread. I eat bread. How did it just show up? Let me go in and find out. And the Creator dove into that loaf of bread and went back to the ingredients, the preparation, the heating of the oven. Kept on going back and back until the Creator finally immersed from swimming within their creation and says, Now I got it. Not only did I create it, but I experienced what it was like to do it. The bread came out of the oven first. And my dear friends, in addition to getting off of linear thinking, oh, this is going to be fun. You're going to find it fascinating, confusing at times, but fascinating. But no more processing. It just is not appropriate. It's tiring. It's energy consuming. That processing causes that little inner child or that nasty little past life or that aspect to literally steal energy from you. It's, a, it's an addictive vampire. No more. It has no control over you or anything, but you allow it to be there because it gives you certain pleasure. And it lets you be a victim. And a creator cannot be a victim. A creator is a creator. That's it. Point number three, with a little swell of the music to add to the theatrical effect. Point number three, let's just take a good deep breath and feel into it. Stop fearing the human self. Music, effect, profound words followed by a sym <laughs> symphony effect of the music. Let's try that again. You can cut that other part out of the video. Okay, music is light and low. I'm saying for our next point stop fearing your human self. <laughs> Not ready for Hollywood, but. but not bad, not bad. Stop fearing your human self. 
There's a lot of fear. This all came up last Tuesday and Wednesday at the Crimson Council. The long discussions and we got talking about humans. This kind of sounds like cinema music. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We had a long talk about humans, and one of the things we really observed, were clear about, was that they fear themselves. And there's some that are going to continue fearing themselves for a while. And that's why so many of the angelic beings left the Crimson Council. Stay with the humans are still fearing and processing and thinking small. Actually honoring them, knowing that, well, they're simply enjoying doing it. That's where they want to be. But for the rest of us, we go forward and backward. There's a lot of fear there of the human self. It's time to stop fearing it. Of your body, of diseases, of death, of aches and pains. That fear alone will cause these things to be. It will cause the pain to get more painful, the aging to get more aged. (laughs) There's a lot of fear you have about your own thoughts. A lot of you really get into thought control, mental limitation of your own mind, not letting certain thoughts through. Ten years ago, most of you couldn't have thought or let the thought through that there's no difference between the light and the dark. You had to separate it. The light is good, the dark is bad. You had to hold out, block out dark thoughts. But Satan, bad energy. If I think dark, I'm going to create dark. (laughs) It just means you don't really understand creation yet. This whole law of attraction thing, uh, it's interesting, but it's very mental. I teach people that what you think is what you get. That's bullshit. It's not that at all. And you've all tried it. It doesn't work. It works a little bit right away, but then it goes away. Because it's not true creation. It is simply a manipulation of energies, and there's a huge difference. We're going into true creation, where there's no power, there's no force, there's no agenda, there's no predetermined outcome. It is just creation. But there's a lot of fear of the human. What the human's going to do next? Every one of you has an underlying fear of your own power. You've used it and abused it in the past. You've lopped off heads and feet and hands. You've harmed others. You have tremendous fear of the human. But yet you identify with it. The body and the thoughts and the mind, that's no way to live. Living in fear of the very thing that you are? Living in fear, are you going to be successful? Are you going to be a good partner? Are you going to make it? Whatever making it looks like. Living in fear. Some of you are fearing your dreams at night. Wondering where those thoughts came from. Sometimes even fearing going to sleep at night. It's time to stop fearing the human. It's time to stop fearing other humans as well. I know there's a tremendous feeling of not being safe <clears throat> with other humans, with the world the way it is. But you see, it's only a fearful human, one who fears themselves, that would then fear other humans. It's only one who is afraid of their own body, 
that would fear harm by another human, physical harm. Only one who fears what they might do to somebody emotionally. And they're also going to fear what can happen to them psychically, emotionally from others. It's like the dog chasing its tail. And we're going to catch it. Meaning that it's this perpetual cycle of fear and it begets more fear. A fear of yourself as a human leads to fear of other humans. This is going to be the toughest one of all. I saved it to last till the Mirab. We're going to go we have to go beyond the fear of the human. And it's going to be tough because you're doing it from within the human. And the human actually, in its fear of itself and other humans and its feeling of unsafety, almost can't do it. There's only one and a half, or right, two things that I know of. The most important of all is allowing. Allowing means, dear human, get out of your way. Dear human, open the doors and the windows. Unlock them and open them and allow the Master in. Not just a little bit, not just a foot in the door, not just a breeze in the window, but allow. And that's going to be tough. We've talked a lot about allowing, but there's still tremendous resistance. For some of you, allowing has gotten to be a mental concept rather than opening the doors and the windows. Because of the human fears, fears what may come. What is the master? Is the master just superhuman? Point number three, and the, perhaps the most important of all, go beyond fearing the human. And that includes fear, letting go of the fear of death. fear of pain, all of these things. There is so much that is caught up with the fear of being human, and we simply, simply can't go where we're going to go and have that fear of the human. You'll fall on your hands and knees before we even get out of the chute. There's nothing to fear, actually. You come to understand that the human has actually never done anything wrong, ever, ever, ever. And don't give me the philosophical thing, well, what if I go out and murder somebody? You're not going to. Otherwise, I would not be sitting here saying this to you. Stop fearing the past, because it's not really what you think it is. Stop fearing your own, what you would call, power your own awareness. Fearing things like accomplishment, and having it or not having it, abundance, all these things. How do you get over all this? There's an accumulation of fears that hold you back. You go into allowing. You see, the Master comes now with all the wisdom, and its Master has it like a, on a golden plate, bringing it to you. But if you're in fear, you're not going to accept it. And the Master comes with the wisdom of all of the human lifetimes. If you're afraid to wake up in the morning, If you're afraid that the bread you eat might have some tainted chemical and disease, and the water you drink might be infested with little critters, and you're afraid of everything, you're not going to realize this gift of wisdom 
You're going to be afraid of it too. You're going to think it's grown in some chemicals and <laughs> bad for you. Oh, the fears, they're, they're almost funny. They're obsessive. Obsessive. Eat free range chicken if it tastes better. But don't do it because you're eating it just because you're afraid of chemicals. I'm serious. That's obsessive. That's fearful. If you like the taste, great. But stop, stop obsessing and fearing. You are a master, not a wimp. Yes, I would say of all the things we've talked about today, going beyond the fear of being human is going to be the toughest. It's going to stop you dead in your tracks, right? When you really feel like you're opening and expanding, when you feel like, you know, when you feel that creator energy, you just let out that burst of consciousness, the laughter of the soul. And not trying to determine what it's going to look like. You know, there's real joy of creation. You just take a deep breath and create. I have no idea what I'm creating, how this is going to end up. Oh, shit, a universe with planets and stars and humans. Oh, well, that was fun. That's the real joy of creation, just letting it be. People that talk about creations, having to have it look or be a certain way, that's the antithesis of creating. That's just taking old energy elements and rearranging them and thinking you created something. It's not. True creation. <sighs> just like that. I don't know what's going to happen with that. That passion I just released. But it'll happen, it'll be, and then I'm going to go take a nice swim in it and see how it came to be. So, back to the point. I'm going to go beyond fearing the human. The human is, well, it's kind of a cartoon character in a way, kind of funny, odd, limited, quirky. You know, just take the perspective of the master for a moment, just kind of watching in on the human. The master never judging, never being condescending, but saying, this is really kind of quirky. Humans do the strangest things. The master, master doesn't fear the human. The master is waiting for the human to get over her or his fears of themselves. Where we're going to, the fears of the human simply, simply won't do. Let's take a deep breath for a moment and let's take everything we've talked about today. Bring it all together. We've gone from God, creation, talked about Crimson Council having a big breakup, Whew. and then where we go next. I ask you before we finish this, just to take a moment to feel the beauty of true creation from the standpoint that you were never created. Take a good deep breath into true creation. It's not mental. There's no force or power behind it. It 
just came from you. It just came from you. There's no burden to it. There's no weight. There's not even a responsibility. That's the beauty of true creation. time to get over fearing the human, fearing what the human will do, fearing the body, fearing the thoughts, fearing the future, fearing other humans. It's time to just drop that. Let's take a good deep breath on this first child the year of 2018. Let's take a good deep breath. For all that has already come, <clears throat> and now we're just going back and finding what it was like to have created it. Good deep breath, dear Shumba, as we end this gathering. Ah, some of you are thinking too much already. Just take a deep breath and allow. And remember that all is swell in all of creation. Thank you, dear Shambra. Thank you for today. Thank you.